Well, welcome to another Hubnut member Q&A session. These are questions that have been asked by Hubnut channel members and patrons on that there Patreon. And a bit different this time because Miss Hubnut is joining yeah. us. So uh, we, we shall see how the questions go. Um, I did announce that Miss Hubnut was going to be in there. So some of the questions would be for me, some for Miss Hubnut. We'll see how it goes. But before we get into this, we've had a very exciting weekend, haven't we? We have had a very busy, very busy, very exciting yeah, weekend. Yeah, the, the Hubnut store is back in my hands again. So we've been desperately, you've been mostly desperately <laughs> trying to make space uh, at home for it. So um, yeah, I, I, I now run the store again, looking to do a lot more new items, especially in the run up to Christmas. Very busy behind the scenes trying to get stuff organised for that. And uh, yeah, exciting time. So do head to hubnut.org and check out the store and we will be adding new items. Uh, already got calendars, mugs, beanie hats, t-shirts, mm -hmm. hoodies of some sorts. Got something new arriving one, soon. One small Foxanne t-shirt remains. So if you're small and like Foxanne, be quick. It's the last one uh, of this um, set we've got at the moment. But we better get into the questions. And I think we'll start with Patreon questions. So Crone Man says, he, he actually asked two questions, a bit sneaky. First, how are you all doing, lockdown considered? We're pretty well, we're doing pretty I think. Well. Yeah, I mean, we're yeah. fortunate to live in um, paradise, even though it's blowing a gale again today and it's going to mm. rain very severely later. But um, yeah, we were, could... we were kind of more ready this time for a lockdown. Yeah. So we just hunkered down and we know what, what was expected this time. So. Yeah, at, at the time of recording, um, it's just been announced that England's going to go into a month long lockdown we're halfway through a two-week lockdown here in wales um unfortunately i can come up to the unit it, it, it's close to home so uh, we can work away and not not encounter anybody so that's very very good second question for miss hubnut does miss hubnut have a new favorite now the vector is gone <laughs> in brackets whisper the answer so the other cars don't get upset oh. no no pressure but they're all looking at we're you now. sat amongst them this is cruel yes oh I've always had a bit of a soft spot for Giselle, to be honest. Oh yeah, Giselle the like GSA. She's sat outside at the moment to make room yeah. for us to film. Sorry about the doors clanking around in the breeze, by the way. And I do feel a slight optimism for the alt sit after it showed that flicker of life the other day. So. Oh yes. Yes. That's, um, I, I was a bit wrong to call that a slow burner project, given it's already caught fire. But, <laughs> oh um, God, that's awful wording. Yes. Oh, rush. S someone's got... Um, William Tever has um, quite a long question. Oh, it's a short story and a question. Oh, we'll we'll wow. stick just to the question. I think, oh. on this. Well, well, we'll see. Okay. Does Miss Hubnut get a little annoyed if you try to do the mail without her? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> also, have you had to hide the tail accompanying ears and other <laughs> toys uh, from your children? Or have they been sent back to the person who sent them? It was quite funny seeing them appear in the mail video. Yes, I'm never quite sure what's going to turn up in the mail. No. But we don't know the source of that. We don't know if people have ordered it or if it's just a Chinese company has got my address and is just sending random items in the hope I might publicise them. We don't fully understand what's going on there. Yeah, I think I'm a all. naturally inquisitive person. So yeah. all these parcels arriving, it just, it just definitely appeals to that nature. And when it's things that are interesting, shall Interesting, we say, yes then um, it just makes it more exciting. I just remember the children watch this channel. Hello. Hello, children. Just ignore this question. Um, and hiding them, yeah, they're, mm. they're not really things that are appropriate for um, children. <laughs> oh, his short story is um, getting in touch with a local gentleman who owns a 1963 Saab 95 two-stroke oh. and a 96 V4. He gave me a ride in the two-stroke uh, which he finished restoring in February this year. Definitely hubnut worthy. Oh yeah, send, send some details. Um, those Saabs are magnificent machines and uh, rally winning machines as well. Although um, the 95 is the estate, one of very few estates who have ever competed on an international rally, but it did take part in the Monte Carlo rally. Was it 66, 65, somewhere around there? Eric Carlson campaigned uh, at Saab 95 estate because only the estate had a four-speed gearbox. How's that for a nugget? Right, uh, Simon Parsons, now that your unit is at max capacity, are we likely to see any roadworthy ones finding, finding new homes? Ooh. Uh, I think the fleet of Citroens, including the Altset, make a fab collection and should never be split from the other two, oh. which is kind of fair enough. Um, hopefully you'll be able to tackle both Yugo and Altset, but do you have an action plan, or is an action plan just not very hubnut? 
Yeah, I think an action plan is just not very helpful. But we're not playing. However. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> There's going to be a bit more me involvement, and I like a bit of organisation. Oh yeah, this is dangerous. She yeah. she, she has promised to organise me, so um, and I have long term viewers will know how un disorganised I a am. A month of free time in which to organise you. So. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> interesting times ahead, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm not planning on selling any of the cars. I'm not planning to acquire any more cars because I just don't have space. In fact, I've had to turn down some free cars. Um, in the past month, I've had a couple of cars I would you know really like to own, but I've had to say, just say no because I just they're both projects and I'm already over capacity and in terms terms of mental capacity as well as space. So yeah, no more projects. And I haven't said I like any of them, so they're safe. Mm. Did you do you actually get around to picking? Oh yes, you did. You picked yourself. Yes, I yes. remember. Yes. Uh, Josh that Woodford. <laughs> if Miss Hubnut was to daily a car of your current fleet, which would it be? Oh, see, I've got to think about the whole practicality thing because, you know, children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That probably rules out the Invercar. Yeah, I think so. And as Fox it, Am, as it no rear seat. Distinctly says passengers are forbidden. So it does, yeah. That's a no-go. Oh, well, I'm quite looking forward to um, pootling around in Myrtle. Myrtle and is in for MOT at the moment. I mean, she's, for somebody that's not a driver yet, and will be a new driver I think she's probably the best yeah. because she's small and perfectly formed so. yeah and I can reach the pedals which we have tested this it's quite a problem in my world mm. <laughs> so there we go Myrtle Matiz gets the nod uh, Nigel Hancock says it's a year since you were hosted by Boris the cat in Fongarai in New Zealand it was yeah I stayed with Nigel and Boris uh, seems a lifetime ago and uh, yeah that year has gone very quickly where in the world, other than wonderful Wales, would you like to live with the Hubnut clan naturally? Um, well, we quite like France, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we do. So France would be very, mm. very tempting. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, I mean, we've got your children through education, first of all. Yes. Probably, yes. before thinking of living anywhere else. So we don't want to up sticks. But, yeah, France. Th there's so many lovely parts of France, especially away from the cities. Rural France. Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, a lot of it is decaying very badly, but that's what makes it beautiful. Mm. So, yeah. and uh, s someone is quite good at speaking French, so that's good. Paul Watts, are the cars you have sold on still on the road? Uh, I think in the vast majority of cases, no, <laughs> uh, because I, I went through a, a huge phase of buying kind of end of life cars. Really, it was just enjoy them while they're just about hanging together. So a lot of cars, of the seventy cars I've owned, I reckon fewer than ten are actually still on the road. It's quite sad, isn't that it? That is sad. More recent ones are on the road. The Rover 45 V6 is still going. That's with an enthusiast up in the northeast. Uh, the Skoda, I think, has recently been listed on eBay, the Skoda Favorite. Um, so I think that is up for sale, but that's still going strong. Didn't we pass uh, one of yours the other day? Yeah, the Toyota Starlet. The Toyota Starlet, quite an interesting one. You might remember I visited Peter Anderson while I was in Melbourne. Uh, who's done a lot about Toyota Starlets and the Takata airbags. Well, the owner of my Starlet has just had a Takata airbag recall notice on it. So they want to change the airbag on his um, 1997, I think it was, or was it a 98, Lovely. Toyota Starlet. It's just insane. But at least in this country, we're not scrapping them. In Australia, it's just like, we will buy your car and scrap it. Um, in, in this country, they seem a little bit more civilised in that they, well, well, we'll just change the faulty part, the airbag. Um, Hyundai are doing similar, aren't they? Yeah, the, the, the Takata airbag thing affected a load of manufacturers, but it just seems insane to scrap a car because one tiny little bit in an airbag's faulty. Uh, very strange. Uh, Barry Davis, in the cold light of day, do you ever honestly think that the Sana or Altsit will ever, in your ownership, be road legal again and run under their own steam? Yes. I mean... Uh, uh, some, some projects are big, some projects are small. I mean, when I got Took, I didn't know if she was ever going to run. She'd spent 14 years in a field. I got Fox Ann without an engine at all. Well, there was an engine. It was just absolutely entirely broken. So, um, yeah, that time will come. Um, the Yugo, I'm probably more confident. But, um, yeah, I'm not really out the alt set at I'll all. I'll see on Team alt set. Yeah, a yeah, bit, bit of welding, maybe a new engine. We don't know what's stopping the engine turning. It could be something simple. We don't know yet. So, yeah, there's a lot of investigating to do. It's mm -hmm. just, you're not going to get something changing in like two weeks. You're going to have to wait on that, just as I'm going to have to wait. 
Paul Brown, Ian, your Hubnut Museum is something that I'd be interested in. If I were to snuff it tomorrow and someone asked my last request as I lay gasping for breath, give Hubnut my cars. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, thank you, Paul. Uh, yeah, I, I think that can be the, the problem when you've got a museum. I think you get bequeathed a lot of cars. And uh, I, I know some museums then get in trouble because they sell on the cars sometimes because they can't keep them all. They're much like anyone, really. They haven't got limitless space so um yeah that's, that's very kind but um yeah do, do talk through the pr practicalities before um including me in your will thank you uh graham bentley as always really enjoying the channel love the tinkering what's your favorite area of tinkering bodywork electrics engine etc it's probably engines because you're, you're making something live again that wasn't living very well before and uh, it's basically Meccano. You just take mm -hmm. things apart and you bolt new bits on. Bodywork requires patience, which is why I'm rubbish at it, which is why Foxanne still has a hole here covered with aluminium tape where um, her bonnet hinge pulled out. But you said you were good at fiberglass. I was going to say, is she fiberglass? Mm. I would give her a go. Oh, oh, there's some future video content mm. there. Uh, Sven Bornemark. Miss Hubnut, do you sometimes wish Mr. Hubnut had a more conventional attitude towards motoring? like spending one amount on one modern family car and getting rid of all the quirky vehicles on the premises. You may have to whisper your reply as not to upset Mr. Hubnut. The disdain in your voice when you yeah. said one, one vehicle. So obviously you all watch the channel, you all subscribe and so on, and you can appreciate the love that he has for these vehicles. Um, Very it, real. It is known for him to come and just sit amongst the cars. I do um, that sometimes, yeah. And the beauty is that myself and the children, we, we do share that love now, especially the children. They've got some projects that they would like to do mm -hmm. um, in the future. Some interesting plans there. Oh, I don't think your daughter's forgiven me for selling Vic Salo, though, because that's no, the first car she ever drove, she and I sold it. not forgiven you for no. that. So there's another car. It's still out there, Vic Salo de Vauxhall, uh, recently sold on eBay, I think. Oh, did she sell? I don't know. I didn't keep an eye on the advert. But um, she's out there somewhere. So. I hope so. Mm -hmm. She had a lovely boot. Um, but no, we. I think we probably love these cars. Not as much as he does. That would be difficult to but be fair. the children, it's lovely to see how the children react when Ellie pulls up because they know the distinctive engine sound now. Mm -hmm. um, or if he's rocked up in Foxanne. Um, or if they get to do a school run in Giselle. They absolutely love it. And it's nice that they've got... Um, a, a, a passion for it. I mean, mm. younger Miss Hubner, uh, I suspect we've got a little speed demon there. Yeah, the way she was flying around that field of dreams in the borrowed 2CV of my <laughs> yeah. friend. Yeah, she was very comfortable. Into second, away we go. And it was lovely to see her enjoy something like that. She's a teenager. They're all good creatures. And um, the wee man, he wants to build a car. Yeah, he, he has a massive desire to build a P50 at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's doing calculations to see how long it would take him to afford a kit. You can buy them brand new uh, with his pocket money. And uh, <laughs> he wasn't very happy when he found out because they're quite expensive. The kits are about eight, eight and a half grand. But he's, he's determined on the PL Peel 50. Yeah, yeah. I'm not quite, quite sure. And he keeps on asking me, would this engine fit in a Peel P50? I think he doesn't realise how small a Peel <laughs> P50 is. It's called a P50 because it's a 50cc engine. Yes. Yeah, so, so, no, I, I we would never... We have a, a sensible family runaround in, in Rita, and Giselle is surprisingly practical. Very practical. We yeah. have done some travelling in Giselle. Mm -hmm. um, no, we wouldn't ever want him to get rid of the cars. Yes. <laughs> right, there we go. Right, we're on to YouTube now. We've got 56 questions, so um, bear with. You may wish to make a cup of tea. We haven't got a cup we of tea. We haven't got a cup of tea. We might have to stop and make a cup of tea, and then we'll crack on with the YouTube questions. Right, we'll jump onto the YouTube questions. We'll try and get through them fairly quickly. Uh, the first one isn't even a question. It's from Merzal, and he just says, Rationally, you should have kept the Vectra, but hey, this is Hubnut. Rationality has never had anything to do with Hubnut. I mean, Vixella the Vectra had her good points. Massive boot. Massive boot. You could cram Perfect. so much stuff into that car. The footwell as well. You could have a picnic bag and legs. Yeah, uh, well, short legs. Short day. I couldn't fit one in my side, I've got pedals. Uh, but yeah, um, she, she was good, but um, I just didn't get on with her. So I, I think it's rational to get rid of a car that you don't enjoy driving. So she had to go, <laughs> gone. Uh, 
Scottish Car Enthusiasts TV. Uh, if you had to slim the fleet down to three cars, keeping one practical car for family duties, what would the fleet look like? Uh, we I, had I'm, some discussions. We, on we this had one. some discussion, mm. but the cars weren't looking at me in the eye when I had this discussion because Ellie's a keeper for life, uh, Tuck's a keeper for life, and so I, was, I guess it a bit of a Rover or the GSA. Mm. I think you choose Rita over Giselle. I might do, you know, just because there's just a bit more comfort, bit bit more pleasant to drive around town. Giselle's lovely on long distance drives, but around town she's a shunting pain in the backside. Maybe I need to look at engine mountains, this but I think they were always like that. very awkward with Foxanne right behind us. It is, it is yeah. <laughs> and uh, the Sana, you can see peeking over there as well. <laughs> so, um, moving swiftly on. Sean Clark, did you consider buying the Vectra back when the new owner put it up for sale? No. <laughs> uh, when Cauliflower McPug, who um, I met over in New Zealand in Christchurch, when will Miss Hubner get her licence? As soon as possible, really. Um, yeah. Obviously, things are a bit strange at the moment with driving lessons and tests and all that stuff. Um, but once Myrtle's back on the road, I will do some pootling round. Mm -hmm. I will, you know. Well, how much is the insurance going to cost? I don't know. I do, because I've actually looked into have you? it. Yeah, I haven't told you yet, have no, I? No, you haven't. £42 extra it'll cost. Bargain. So that's going to happen. Whether we film it or not, it doesn't necessarily seem fair. It's a high-stress situation. But then you have difficulties with the driving test, which is a high, high-stress situation. Yeah, so actually situation, it might be, so it be good. Yeah, yeah, we'll get you to chill out behind the wheel. Yep. Chill out. I'll be so calm, come yeah, to test. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just fill your car with um, incense, it'll be fine. <laughs> Just chill you out. Chilly. Yeah, yeah, just have some calming music on the stereo. <laughs> I'm sure it'll allow that. It'll be fine. Dean, do you think you might do an engine rebuild or an overall rebuild on Took? And it seems I actually replied to this because sometimes I um, forget that I'm meant to be answering the questions in a video. Um, but, yeah, well, I have plans for Took. I, I, she will never be a museum piece, factory, marvellous, whatever. Uh, she will never look like she did the day she was brand new. You'd lose too much character. She looks like she does because she spent 14 years sitting in a field. Um, but nonetheless, there are some things that are definitely... Um, I've managed to lose the comments. Definitely not ideal. And uh, we won't be doing a full engine rebuild. It's got good compression. Um, it runs well. So uh, I'm just going to sort the um, spark plug situation out and that'll be that. And... Uh, Bodywork, definitely some improvements to be made. Uh, again, um, if the fiberglassing of Fox Ang goes well, there's plenty to be done on talk. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> I just so. walked past her and thought, oh, I can see this needs sorting. <laughs> yeah, she's got cracks and holes <laughs> yeah, all over the place. Better. It's better now she's out of the weather. She was sitting around outside in Wales, which is um, not very good at all. Uh, end float, my dream car is a DeLorean. I know they're a bit crap in many ways, but what is your opinion on them? But they're a bit crap in many ways. Uh, have you ever driven one? No. And would you own one? Maybe. But I think the film references would just do my head in. I mean, you can't drive a DeLorean anywhere without um, Back to the flu Future. Back to the Future? Back to the Future and uh, Flux Capacitor gags. So yeah. uh, we are, might we do are my head in. We are a certain era. I yeah. mean, it's iconic. Mm. But that doesn't mean we want one. Necessarily. Yeah. Sometimes cars are ruined by their associations. Uh, Reliance Scimitar is a good one. If you own a Reliance Scimitar, everyone will tell you that Princess Anne used to own one. What they don't know is she still does own one. She's got a middle bridge. Tucked away somewhere. I believe she still owns one. I think she's the patron of the club or oh, really? Scimitar and Sabre Owners Club. I think she's involved slightly. Um, so there you go. DeLorean, yeah. I, w I really would like to drive one just to see what they're actually like. Would you drive one that was a replica of the film or would you just I'd drive a not. DeLorean? I'd just like to drive a DeLorean. Mm. Um, Colin Furs seems to have one floating around on his channel from time to time. and uh, I mean, they are striking looking cars. And there's a fascinating story, the whole Zor story of um, DeLorean himself and uh, Colin Chapman's involvement with Lotus. It, it's fascinating. I've got a really thick book. Um, written by um, some people in the club, I think it was, and it is well worth a read. It's a mighty tome. Uh, ah, Sean Murray, who did or does still own the Skoda. I'm not sure if it has been sold yet. Um, great to see you tinkering with the fleet again. Do you think the fuel pump in the tank on the Rover may be changing to sort out the lack of power? Yeah, I've got a pump. I'm going to try it. It may work. It may not. The underbonnet pump might be 
knackered as well. I don't know, but um, certainly the, the um, consensus seems to be it's a fueling issue on Rita the Rover, and that's why she's sluggish. She's still quicker than every other car on the fleet, though. Yeah. Yeah. Awkward. Uh, yeah. Oh yes, he says he's selling the Skoda. Been great having it, but time to move it on. Well, as I well understand, hence why I sold the Skoda to him in the first place. So um, yeah, I hope that's all gone well, Sean. It's a lovely car, that Skoda. Lovely condition, apart from that paint. But he managed to improve it quite substantially, and has done videos. So if you look for Sean Murray Skoda on YouTube, uh, you will find details of that. Gray the Floydian Sergal, who also has a. Um, uh, channel and has Annie the Alpine, a beige Tulba Alpine. Ooh. Very, very nice. For Miss Hubner and Daughter, sadly we are not joined by Daughter today, were you already interested in cars before Hubner came into your lives and do you guys have any favourites? Oh, please tell the world what your favourite car is. <laughs> what, the Ford Escort? Yeah. <laughs> On the fifth generation. Oh, I thought it was the six. You I like, like the fifth and the sixth. Yeah, mm. she likes that baboon rear end. I really end. do. I ju it's just because we had. Uh, I think she was a fifth generation, and she came to us at a very difficult time when we had no money or anything, and she just worked like a trooper. But I do like the aesthetic as well. I like how the rounding of them, which he calls the baboon's bottom, um, and I also like the. Um, Smiley face on the... I, that's such a girly answer, I'm sorry. I will admit I that the, the Mark VI is much better looking than the Mark V, but I love the Mark V because they've been so overlooked. There are so few left. When you see a Mark V Escort somewhere, it's like, whoa, where have they all gone? Because no one wants them, apart from RS2000s, maybe XR3Is. Mm -hmm. No oh, one's interested. Like Classy lady. I know, I know. But also, in my defence... Um, my dad did have a, a Citroen Safari when I was a child. Older CX. And yeah. that is probably our most memorable car because um, nobody else had a seven-seater at that point in time. And the fact that it had the hydraulic suspension, it went up and down. Um, that, cool. That, Seriously cool. Oh, it was really, mm. really cool. All the other kids were like, that is awesome. So that car sticks in my mind as well. As for my daughter... She has a real love for two CVs. And she does. She didn't love cars beforehand, but I think that day when she got to drive, mm. <laughs> that was like a life-changing moment, and uh, she would like to build a car as well. Oh, yes. yes. If, can we build a two CV out of parts? Yes. It might happen. We've got plenty of time. She's only 13, yep. so she's not going to be driving any time soon, nope. so that's a long but, time yeah, ago. She, she's really gained a love of cars, and it's as I say, it's nice to see her have a love for something when she's mm. a teenager right moving on Max Eves very brave of Ms Hubnut to get involved in the channel can you ask her how she feels to be part of your YouTube world <laughs> um it's very strange yes it is very <laughs> uh, strange it's uh, my kids are obsessed about YouTube I'm constantly buying YouTuber merchandise because there's somebody else that they've fixated on. Mm. Um, but I think it's really nice to actually see what it's like and all the work that goes into it. Because I think we've got a generation of children who think it's really easy and anybody can be a YouTuber. But with mine seeing how much work goes into mm. it. I think it's been actually really good for them to see that. That, yeah. you know, that, that and the realities of the income, because they think all YouTubers are millionaires. I think they were a bit disappointed when they realised, <laughs> I'm no millionaire. So. <laughs> no, I think you brought so much into their lives. The, mm. the money doesn't matter at all. It's, it's the life experience that's more important. I mean, we're thinking about adventures moving forwards, um, which is opportunities that I, we wouldn't have had otherwise. Mm. So... Yeah, That's it's going to be fun. A fantastic aspect of, mm. of the YouTube situation. Yep, and if we if we ever get to hold socials again, which I'm sure we will at some point, um, we can rope them in for selling merchandise. Yes, we can. We Child can. labour for the win. Uh, Tony Smith, you mentioned that at 20 years, Ellie is the car that you've had the longest amount of time. It is. She's just sat there at the moment. What was the shortest amount of time that you've owned a car for? Um, <laughs> I did own a BMW 5 Series for, I think, two weeks. Maybe even less time than that. Um, but a, a, a colleague of mine at the time just wanted shot of. And he was very upset when I then sold it for 150 quid. I didn't drive it because it didn't work. I, I just sold it on for spares and repairs. And, uh, yeah, that, that wasn't very long. 
No, two weeks is not very long. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, there was once I went to look at a car and didn't buy it. And uh, that's close, isn't it? I, I made my mind up, I'm going to buy this car. And it was actually so bad, I walked away. And I, That was when to, you bought another car, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I had to frantically mm. find another car. The Rover 416, if you search right back at the beginning of my history on YouTube, uh, that is a car I bought to get home. And uh, it was surprisingly good, actually. Uh, James Wallace for Miss Hubnut. Have you found a new found love of average cars now you're involved with the channel? No, I think you loved average cars. Yeah, anyway. I, mean, she, I did. She liked Ford I Escorts. Ford Escorts, so I was always a bit about the average car. Mm. Um, but I do like the slightly unusual, you know, average cars. Your Renault Valsatis and your oh, yeah. Sanyong Muzo and all that kind of thing. I really like the ones that they She's didn't a good one. sell many of, and you don't mm. see, but they were something a bit special. So, no, I've, I've, yeah, it's not something new. <laughs> mm. And for me, why not swap all the old sit parts to a Visa? Simple reason is they're very, very different cars. Uh, the old sit is what the Visa was meant to be, but Peugeot insisted on using Peugeot running gear, apart from the little 652 cc engine. That's the only commonality between the two cars is the 652 engine. You could buy um, an Altset with a 652 in Romania. So that's why, because it's it's not easy to do at all. Um, it, it's closer in engineering terms to the GSA. So I can find another GS, GSA engine, I'm sure. I did have a foolish idea the other day of turning it into a C-Matic. With you? a semi-automatic gearbox. I bet no one's built a C-Matic Altset. That'd be amazing. Uh, and downside being that the C-Matic fluid is unique to those gearboxes and cannot be used in any other car and is very hard to get hold of, I believe. This sounds sensible. Yeah, so it's the way to go, clearly. Uh, Ella Woodhouse, have to say, not too keen on voxels. I find them a little uncomfortable. Yes, <laughs> the pain I was in by the time I got to Edinburgh. Oh. Do you think you'd ever buy another Skoda again, though? Yes, but the, the Volkswagen era ones don't interest me that much because they're a bit Volkswagen-ish. And uh, let's face it, the Germans aren't always brilliant at seats. And Volkswagens tend to be better than Vauxhalls, but I just find them a bit plain and dull. So if I was to have another Skoda, it would definitely be rear-engined. Mm. Robert Brink, uh, again, how are you coping with lockdown? Very well, thank you very much, Robert. Any plans of acquiring new skills, e.g. welding? Uh, yeah, I do need to weld, I think. I think that would make life much easier and make more interesting content. Uh, now I'm not so hirsute. I was worried about s setting my flaming locks on fire. Um, uh, yeah, maybe a bit better. Sana wiring. Mm. Miss Hubnut and daughter, any plans of more involvement or even starting your own channels? <laughs> I don't think I'd start my own channel. Um, just because I'm probably going to be more involved with the Hubnut channel. Uh, daughter already has a channel. She does. But it's not car related, it's just teenagery stuff. Just, it's just life related. Yeah, yeah, testing the waters. I think she does all kinds of things on there. Mm. What was it she did yesterday on there? There's urbex. Some... Oh, Urbex, yes, yeah, she did some Urbex yesterday. Yeah, but um, we haven't watched a video yet. We'll have to sit there and come to you and watch that later because I'm yeah. sure we'll get quizzed on it. Mm -hmm. mm. So, yeah, that channel's kind of more, a, a bit more for sort of friends and family. Yeah. Yeah. Hence, I'm not sharing links uh, no. at the moment. She'll probably kill me for not sharing links, but there we go. <laughs> she's, she's, she'll be watching this. She'll be like, go on, do it, do it. Oh, no, no, we've been going for over 10 minutes. She won't be watching by now. <laughs> Attention span, gone. Uh, fixed drive ride fly for Miss Hubnut. Are you concerned about the things Ian is sending himself via the P.O. box? <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's not a real question. Uh, my question is, what is it about the Vector that you prefer over the much nicer 75? Well, I think we've discussed it, really. Yeah, it? It for me, it was just practicality, mm. the boot and that footwell. It's only purely the fact I could get a picnic bag and my legs in that Yeah, we, we, we had a short break uh, before lockdown um, in Rita the Rover. We went up to North Wales and it was frankly terrifying how quickly that car filled up. Yes. And we just had no space. We were just all no. packed in with bags and stuff all over the place. And the dog, of course. Yes, and the dog. So, uh, yeah, it... For, for a large car, the Rover 75 is not very practical. And the Tourer isn't a lot better. The, the load space is very shallow if you actually want to see out the rear window. And when you start stacking things up, the roof line comes in um, quite sharply. So they're not that practical as not vehicles. Not much 
le- I mean, I'm not a person to talk about leg space, um, mm. as I'm pretty sure. Um, but there isn't much leg space in the 75. No, it, it is all very cosy. So that that is a, a definite downside. Now the Ford Fairmont AU. Oh, oh. <laughs> very spacious. And you discovered last night that she was gold. She's gold, yeah. I, I hadn't <laughs> made that link. She was a gold car. She's an AU Falcon or Fairmont. So there you go. Uh, the chemists will know what the relevance is there. X Power Zone, what 70s or 80s car would you like to have taken off the production line then and stored and kept in perfect condition so it could be driven as new today? Oh, oh. that's quite the question. A 2CV would be interesting, I think. Yeah. Just because, you know, Ellie's done over 200,000 miles and most of her has been replaced. Um, it, it's a long time since I've driven a low mile 2CV and there is a difference, just the way they're assembled. So, um, yeah, I would like to do that. Definitely. That's probably a bit of a waste. All the cars in the world, and they go, oh yeah, I'll have a 2CV, what I've already got. Yeah, but you haven't seen her from new. No, no, she had 89,000 miles on her already when I got her, and a very rotten chassis, which managed to weld for a couple of MOTs before it was replaced. Uh, Robert N. Green 6. Hello, Mr. Hubnut. What car have you found to have the comfiest seats? W124 Mercedes probably rates pretty high there. I drove one of those once for six hours and got out feeling like I just got in it. Saab 9.5, a fairly early 9.5. That was also one of those cars that you just got out of and didn't feel like you'd done any distance in. The Rover's not bad, but the, the seat tilts forward slightly too much for my liking. I can't find a way to adjust it. Mm, it takes a little bit to get them adjusted on the 75 mm. seats, I find. Yep. Robert N. Green also asked whether you like Myrtle and Matiz, but I think we've already... I do like Myrtle yes. and Matiz. Uh, Lloyd Vehicle Consulting, will we ever see a him and her challenge uh, on the channel? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we could do it. So yeah. Maybe we'll do fibreglassing. Oh! And it'll be you just quietly getting on it while I swear and get covered in <laughs> resin. And just go, this stuff is horrible! In the background. So we do half a tuck each, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see which side falls apart first. My side. Uh, Ali Mac Mechanical, would you ever buy another Land Rover? If so, what model? I would still love um, a first generation Discovery that isn't hopelessly rotten and broken like mine was. To be fair, I only paid 450 quid for it, but it was not a prime example. Mm. But I, I just love them. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would like one of those. Shane Marsh, hi Miss Hudnuth, what's it like being the girlfriend of a living legend? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah she definitely feels like she's um, living with a legend uh, do you know what I, on a personal level I do because um, he is a bit of a superhero um, for example if we had we had the school run from hell the other day oh. <laughs> printers uh, why are home printers so rubbish and um, we couldn't print my son's music and we had histrionics and then the teenager was late and so I was walking them both to school with them both in bits uh, and then all of a sudden the inimitable sound of a 2CV engine as he pulls up yep, in rushing Ellie towards the bus stop with yeah. the music so yeah he is a legend in our household as well as on the internet oh, stop it my head my head will <laughs> I won't be able to get through the door uh, he also says could you talk him into letting the hopeless projects go Oh, no, because she likes the hopeless we've projects. We've seen some life. I yeah, know. yeah, the old sit lives. Yeah, and we are going to try and get some life out of the Yugo as well. Yeah, uh, Ian Ellis, you've gone from your garage to a unit now to a larger unit. If you had unlimited space and funds, how many cars do you think you'd own? <laughs> oh, gold. Uh, how long and is it are there any other cars you would buy back? Oh, you know what? I think I would buy the 45 V6 back. Um, I, I really liked that car. Betty? Um, Betty, yeah, I'd buy Betty back um, if um, Tony, who owns her now, would be willing to part with her. Uh, she, Yeah, she's definitely one I would buy back. I think that's how long is a piece of string, because if you had unle- endless space and yeah. endless funds, there would be endless cars. Well, this unit has proved it. It had a bit more space, and I've completely filled it. So for any given space, a petrol head will fill said space. So, yeah, I would own loads of cars. Uh, Gary Skyrim. Now that you have a 2000s car on the fleet, which cars from say the 2010s or even Ooh. current cars would you consider to be future Hubnut material? Uh, 
Yeah, you're obsessed with the Citroen Ami, the weird little electric car that's utterly pointless. Oh, I think Town it's Town use only. I, I love electric cars, but I don't love electric cars that can only do 45 miles an hour. That's just adorable. Pointless. Hmm. I don't know. It's really difficult, because I kind of feel that even the Rover has a little bit too much complexity for my liking that, you know, I'm not entirely comfortable with it. And uh, so anything more modern, um, yeah, maybe maybe it is the electric cars. Maybe the early Nissan Leaf will become um, mm, that's a good choice. Yeah, a, a bit of a hubnut car. People are already starting to dismantle battery packs and take dead cells out and keep them going. So people say you can't meddle with electric cars. You really can. So um, yeah, and I quite like the Nissan Leaf. It was really the pioneer of, of the working actually usable electric car so there you go Nissan Leaf uh, another one for Miss Hubnut do you have a car you'd particularly like to drive or experience oh that's a difficult question mm, uh, probably oh I would probably go back to my Ford oh no mm, I would an XR3i what era sort of 80s time oh you want a mark three or four yeah they're not the greatest engines i know they're not though. i know they're really not but I mean, it's come on just... astra gte 16 valve digital Dash. no it's just oh. a car that i've held in high esteem for so very long that i would like to drive it oh they say never meet your heroes no this is true yeah, we'll see. Uh, also oh god he's gonna hate me for this one as well bmw x6m this this is interview's over <laughs> I saw one at Santa Pod and somebody had souped it up to the max and it was just, it was quite amazing to watch. First we prove that not everyone is perfect. Ultimate disappointment. Mr. Hubner, do you have a weird car crush? Uh, something not usually your type. Well, anything weird is kind of my type, by definition. Ooh, exciting weather again. Uh, he also asked uh, whether we'll see good quality vacuum insulated mugs or travel cups. Mm, that's something for us to look into. Uh, for those of us working on our cars outside in the freezing cold, it's that's freezing cold a really in here. That's a good idea. Yep, yeah, we'll bear that in mind, see what we can do. So thank you very much. But yeah, weird car crush. Oh, I don't know, really. Uh, I quite like L322 Range Rovers. So that's not a very hard nut car. Uh, Mark Pitt, if you had the opportunity to electric convert one of the fleet, which car would it be and why? Yeah, I, 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 I struggle to answer that one. I, I really do. I, I can't. I, I wouldn't want to do Tuck because she's defined by her flat twin engine and the um, CVT belt drive transmission. You wouldn't bolt an electric motor to that. Uh, in some ways, it would make her more usable. But how usable is a single seater car? Um, Foxan would still make sense, I think, for electric conversion. But let's get the engine working first of all, eh? So yeah, not too sure. Liam Smith, Nissan Cube, like or not like? Uh, I like I Nissan like the Cube. Cube. Yeah, mm. they're, they're nice to drive. Uh, when I had my Honda SMX, I did a feature in Retro Japanese magazine where I compared it with a Cube. And I didn't really want to admit it, but the Cube was a lot nicer to drive. Mm. Um, but in some ways, I still prefer the looks of the Honda SMX. Those rear lights are amazing. Well, many years ago, I wanted the Honda Element to come over here, but that never happened. No, we it's never got the Element. similar ilk. Yeah, that is a funky looking car. Uh, also, how did you guys meet? Um, it's not entirely relevant to the channel, I don't think, but uh, via Twitter. So, um, not how you perhaps expect. No. Julian Knight, have you used winter tyres? Uh, yes. Uh, here in Germany, most owners change them. Uh, yeah, but it's worth bearing in mind, I'm, I'm certainly now a lot more coastal than I was. Myrtle and Matisse is on all season tyres at the front. Um, but the rest of the fleet are just on summer tyres. So winter tyres definitely have an advantage and living up in the hills, um, they really made a huge difference where you get a lot of heavy frosts. It's not just snow that winter tyres are, are better in. It, it's, um, yeah, kind of all conditions when it's really, really cold. I'm hoping it doesn't get quite so cold no. closer to the coast. I think we last saw snow, real snow in 2010. Oh yeah, I remember that snow. That's when I moved to Wales and uh, that was serious snow. Uh, Mr. Mark UK1, why did you name your 2CV Ellie? Uh, it was because I bought her and then went to see the film Gone in 60 Seconds and I just liked the name Eleanor. So, um, but Ellie, the dolly, seemed to work better so she became Ellie. 
Uh, for Miss Hubnut, will you be getting your driver's license anytime soon? We've already as discussed that. As soon as possible. Yeah, it would be nice to add the female perspective to the challenge. It would be really useful to have a second driver as well. <laughs> it would be very From useful. a practical point of view, yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, many reasons for want to want to do that. Uh, how upset was she when you sold the Vectra? I wasn't that no, upset. No, she didn't stop speaking no. to me. It was fine. No, I think the teenager was more upset. Uh, and we, it was for another practical car, so it was absolutely fine. Oh, he's getting cold. Need an insulated cup. <laughs> Sam Thomas, why are you not with Lancaster Insurance anymore? Uh, that was just a commercial deal. They sponsored a series of videos just at the time where I turned Hubner into the full-time career. So it was a valuable time uh, for them to get involved. Um, so yeah, it was just a commercial deal. That came to an end. Um, they didn't really want to support it when I went travelling because I wasn't the sort of target audience they were after so um, I just came to an end and to be honest it, it's nicer not to have a sponsor of every single video because um, I mean, you, you, you have commercial deals going on all the, all the time but when it's every video you've always got to remember to have the piece of paper ready and get the contact details in the, the description so um, in some ways I'm, I'm happier running without a constant sponsor but that doesn't mean if you you know if you're interested in sponsoring a video you can't <laughs> but um, I'm not looking for another one to sponsor the channel as a whole so to speak Reshead what is your worst experience with a collection caper and the worst you've ever been stranded due to a breakdown uh, without shadow of a doubt the worst one was the Vauxhall Omega that I bought it had been off the road a couple of years I bought blind um, was I given that car or was it a cheap deal I can't remember but either way it involved going to Bristol um, buying this car or getting it whatever and trying to get it road legal there and we discovered it got a diesel leak it got a snap spring it turned into a bit of a fiasco because it turns out the springs are unique to that vehicle oh, Jesus. and that model and that trim level so I couldn't get the right springs. So uh, yeah, that, that that was an interesting experience. And the videos are on the channel somewhere. I'll try and remember to link to them if I can. But yeah, search for Hubner Omega. It was an exciting one, that one. Uh, then there was also the Daimler. The Daimler, 350 quid Daimler that I bought in Glasgow, sight on the scene. And had to fix a fuel leak and a sticky caliper before I could drive it home to Wales. And, and then it really failed to work ever again after I got it home so that was disappointing I think that's your hub nut world in a nutshell really yeah hadn't seen it hadn't driven in several years was going to drive it home yeah yeah <laughs> why, why not I mean even the mighty Dacia the mighty Dacia passed an MOT the day I uh, me and Rich flew out to um, Bulgaria because we actually Went to Bulgaria first and then went to Romania to collect the car. L long story. But that mighty doctor had been off the road eight years. Uh, pa passed the, its equivalent of an MOT the day we flew out. and uh, But then drove back 2,800 miles largely fine. So th that is still one of the best adventures I've ever had. Um, I loved that trip. And that car was amazing. And uh, I'm hoping for mighty Dacia news fairly soon. Lockdown has screwed up my plans again because the mighty Dacia lives in England so we come out of lockdown England will still be in a lockdown so I, I, I can't get an update on it but there has been some progress on mighty Dacia right handbrake Bob Miss handbrake Bob is very strict about merch purchases I'm banned if she were to be persuaded to allow one item which should it be uh, calendar Calendars are practical, always mm. useful. Yeah. Um, remembering birthdays, you know, something some of us aren't very good at. Uh, very helpful for that. Uh, a beanie hat. Yeah. Nice and warm. I'm missing my beanie hat at the moment. Oh, my head is quite cool. Could be out tinkering for longer. Which yeah, is. yeah, yeah. Keep, keeps you out of the house. That's, <laughs> surely that's a good thing. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, head to the store and um, just drop links in her inbox. And, and Christmas you know, is you coming, might get lucky. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Chris Skelhorn, a petite friend of mine, always complained that the back end of her Vectra was too high. Uh, how does stroke did Miss Hudnut get on with reversing? I'm not sure you actually reversed. Reverse oh, it. just a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It must be said it, it is a horrible car to reverse because mm. uh, the mirrors are rubbish, and like you say, it's got a very high rear end, so you can't see what's mm. behind it at all. And when you said about the the high rear end I was thinking more the boot lid because I certainly could not reach the boot lid. Oh yes when the tailgate was open. I cannot reach it so that's an advantage. Yes. 
the Rolling Troll, my friend Stein over in the Netherlands. I would love to know which typically hubnut car she'd like to see on the fleet. Because I think she needs to have a say. So there you go. <laughs> so that, now, then you'd have another reason to get another car and another storage unit. <laughs> Thanks, Stein. Well, if I liked it, the, it would be gone. It would probably arrive here and then. Yeah, you're realising the danger because you said you liked the City Rover, so I sold it. Yes. And you liked the Vectra, so I so sold you it. you sold it. And you liked the Delica, so um, I sold it. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, but yeah, let, let's what imagine I'm not going to get rid of it. What, what do you want? Could be an XR3i Cabriolet, isn't it? No, XR3i no, no, is because not that wouldn't fit. No, it'd have to be a that diesel estate or something. Uh, ooh, what would I have? I think. Shut do you know, up, I think for a plan that we have, I think we'd have to get an Austin Montego. Oh, yes. Montego estate. Yes. Mm. And I suspect that would stay. Yeah. I would love a Montego estate. First car I drove after passing my driving test was my dad's uh, Montego estate. Finished in Lynx bronze. It was gorgeous, gorgeous car. Uh, much better than he before that he had a facelift one and i preferred the pre-facelift one so if you've got a lynx bronze montego estate <laughs> get in touch uh gerard boss von hohenfels but i'm doing that one wrong uh since you now have some heavy projects excuse me which project do you think will be finished in 2021 um out of sana and altsit I think I don't think we could call that one because I think yeah. Sana needs some more investigation. There's a lot that's been taken off her, so she's stop plunking though. She um, is going to take a little bit longer in that aspect. So. Yeah, and I found some chopped wires, and that's mm. not good. Uh, the old sit may actually be easier to resurrect. We'll see. Um, both are big projects. Um, either one with focus could definitely appear on the road next year. I'd, I think I'd lo we would love to get one on the road next mm. year. MG Bets One also um, saying, um, are you going to have driving lessons soon? Uh, don't see why she can't learn from you in Myrtle. This is exactly what yeah. we're going to do. I'm a little nervous. I've actually, I, I was a Midas trainer. This is minibus driving. So I was a trainer doing that. But of course you're training people who can already drive a car. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, and it's a long time since I passed my driving test, so uh, I'm slightly worried I'd give you some bad habits, but uh, we'll see. I think it's, with me, it's the nervousness of the test, but also I couldn't drive between the lessons last time, so you kind of forget all that learning as you go, yeah. so if I can have a driving instructor and then be driving in between... Well, I this is the thing, because um, I, I was put in for my driving test after I'd only had a couple of lessons, but it took so long to get the test... And I wanted to keep on driving. I ended up having quite a lot of lessons just to keep my hand in. And uh, that's useful, but not everyone can do that. So you're, you're now trying to take a test, doing something that is quite complicated, driving a car properly, uh, without actually very much experience of it. So, yeah, certainly mm -hmm. some extracurricular activities will definitely take place. Behave. Uh, oh, um, Sam Ayers is asking um, which... Um, Cars are the children's favourite. We'll have to do that in another session. We might yeah, get them involved in a session. And I know Ellie features quite heavily. I don't know what Wee Man likes. No, he's just obsessed with peeled P50s at yes, the moment. Yes, yes. Oh. Uh, there was a video about a month ago, it says Aurelius 8, um, that mentioned Miss Hubnut was quite handy with fiberglass. You did mention a second channel might be on the cards. Miss Hubnut, fiberglass restorer. Take two. <laughs> oh my goodness. Pressure? No pressure. Yeah, probably not. But there might be a if there's fiber fox hand. <laughs> yeah, if there's fiberglass antics that will be on the main channel. Don't you worry. Uh, Nigel Rudd asks about a toolbox tour. Uh, no, it's too much of a mess. M m m maybe <laughs> another time. It, um, but maybe we'll do that as a separate video, and uh, people can laugh at my absolute he, chaos. He tends to use the vehicles he's working on as the toolbox. As I'm he goes. getting so much better. You are getting Look, better. Look, I mean, there's. there's a massive socket on um, uh, Tuck at the moment, but that's just resting there. It's on his way back to the toolbox. No, he is doing much, much better with the old yeah. organisation. Uh, Nigel Rudd also asks whether I've watched the old Top Gear with Tiffany Dale driving a Yugo Sana many times. It's not quite as funny as the one of Chris Goffey testing a Proton, where he gets so incensed with the beep that goes off every time you open the door and leave the key in the ignition, but he takes the fuse out and throws it into a canal. <laughs> 
he, he just absolutely response. loses it. It's hilarious. Um, Philip Hatfield, are there any channel worthy family cars that you both have on your wish list? Uh, another estate or MPV? Yes, mm. I think so. And uh, I think youngest is already very taken by one of the MPV suggestions. Which one? The Mark One Fiat Multipla. Yes, he is. Yes, mm. yes. The he's duck really face, into as the he calls it. Yeah. He really I would quite like one idea. of those, but um, mm. I'm liking Rita at the moment. But Rita isn't very practical, so yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Alan Lansdale, or oh, Lansdale, sorry. Yorkshire, Barry's, or PG? He's talking about tea, of course. Actually, I'm Typhoo at the moment. That was a kind submission. Whereas at home, we're on the Yorkshire, I think, at the moment. We are at the moment. Nice strong cup of tea to Yorkshire. Uh, Cole Blimp, Wizard of the Fleet, is Miss Hubnut's favourite, and is she allowed to try it? Giselle, and not as yet. Not as yet. It's not the car to learn to drive in. It's not very forgiving uh, to drive that car. Um, Martin Neumann, does Ms. Hubnut need her wonderful French for business or just for le plaisir? <laughs> oh. Pour le plaisir. Ah. Uh, I, I'm a bit of a Francophile. I love France. I would love to live there. Uh, I did live there for a year. I studied French at university and I did a PGCE. French through the medium of Welsh so it was kind of for education purposes initially but um, I love everything about France mm -hmm. um, it's massively le plaisir at the moment excellent you just need to get there mm -hmm. AM question from Ms Hubnut do you worry about some of your other half's crazier ex escapades particularly driving an Invercar on a motorway during a storm surrounded by articulated trucks <laughs> well when he was over in New Zealand and Australia, I got edited versions of things, um, instances. I'm nowhere near that volcano. Yeah, that fire? What fire? That's yeah. hundreds of miles away, that kind of thing. Uh, now I'm acutely aware of everything that he does. And there is always an element of sense underneath the madness. And I do find it very amusing when he says things like, Oh, so I'm popping to Scotland to get a Rover 75. Just nipping up the road. Just yeah. as you do from yeah, West 360 Wales miles. off yeah. to Scotland to go yeah. and pick up a car and get rid of another car. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think it makes life interesting, all these random random things that pass through our lives. Mm. <laughs> Jay Spears to Miss Hubnut, are you sure you can cope with the fame? <laughs> yeah, I want to live forever. <laughs> Don't, because I've been listening to that song recently. Oh. Now it's just going to be on a... Um, a loop in my head. Endless mind loop. Am I ready for the fame? Um, to be honest, I think Ian takes everything in his stride um, with the strange world of Hubnut. Yeah, yeah, it is a strange thing. You know, people say hello to you. It happened the other day mm. at yeah, the we supermarket. Were at Tesco. Yeah, <laughs> just shoved a sandwich in my face. I and do apologise. Yeah. I do apologise to that fan. Mm. Um, I think it's not. It's it's so different to the YouTube world and YouTube fame that my children think it is. Um, and everybody I've met has been absolutely lovely, so no, I'm not worried. Hmm. Excellent. And he also asks, when does the weatherproofing on the unit begin? We need to do something because the other day water was pouring through here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I need to crack on with that. Bit difficult at the moment because we're in lockdown. All the non-essential shops are closed. So that includes hardware shops. Uh, so uh, I can't actually acquire any of the stuff I need to make this place more suitable and I've order, been ordering so much stuff online it's getting ridiculous but uh, yeah we'll see how we're, we're going there's definitely stuff to do here uh, but I've no idea when it's going to start Paul Baker uh, have you considered crowdfunding a replacement engine for the alt sit on Patreon or similar not really um, I crowdfunded the 2CV rebuild, but that wasn't my idea. Someone else said, oh, someone, you know, you might raise a, a couple of hundred quid towards the restoration if you start a crowdfund, and it ended up being over a thousand pounds. It was remarkable, still hugely grateful. But I've got a personal story with that car. It's, you know, a significant part of my life. The Altit has just arrived, so you haven't got that personal story and I'm, I'm not sure how comfortable I feel with a crowdfund. People already support me. I mean, you, Paul Baker, are a channel member, so you pay to be a channel member on YouTube, um, for which I only give you the right to ask questions in these Q&A sessions, but plenty of you support me, so thank you. That, that helps. Shopping on the store helps. Uh, there's loads of ways without doing a specific crowdfund for that project. So um, 
yeah, appreciate all the support all round. Midway Studios, before your trip around the world, you did a video on the Vale of Rydal Railway. I did, that was fun. Actual cab ride in a steam locomotive. While cars are undoubtedly your main interest, along with music, uh, are trains and railways of interest? Yes. He can offer a day out on the Festiniog Railway or the Welsh oh, really? Highland Railway. We watched a program oh, yesterday. Oh, we watched a program on that. Yes, The Welsh we Highland. Did. Yeah, they've just got their... Um, Was it Gwyrfell? Yeah. The name yeah, of the new the carriage? Carriage with the, uh, all the glass in the back. Beautiful restoration. Yeah, it was. So, 12 coats Yes, Patrick, I would be interested once such things are possible again. So if you can drop me an email, ian at hubnut.org, that'd be marvellous. Uh, now you have the shop back. Any chance of some more George the Cat t-shirts? We are hoping to be able to do limited runs on stuff or even one-offs. Uh, so I'm chatting with someone at the moment. Nothing firm in place, but that is the hope. So we can um, do things like that without having to stock up on 50 George the Cat yeah. t-shirts. But yeah, jo George will be appearing in at least one more video uh, when I went to collect the store. That will be a separate video. J Mario one I recently purchased a 1989 Volvo 340 1.7 GL 5 speed with carburetor. Have you ever driven one and what is your opinion? The Triangle of Doom is quite distressing and one of the few things I dislike about the car. Yes, the Volvo 340s do have terrible Triangles of Doom. Um, an interesting car because it was actually developed by DAF and then became a Volvo. Uh, I've driven a couple, I've driven a 360 GLT which is like the top performance version with a slightly knackered clutch. Very odd pedal position. I didn't, didn't like that very much. And I've also driven uh, 1.4 with the CVT, the original um, version, if you like. And uh, I really like that. That was odd enough to definitely get my attention. Yeah, interesting cars. Ne need to um, see more of them. And then the final question from Chris Mackay, who um, sold me Betty. And uh, I drove his A50 um, pre Farina Austin while I was over in um, New Zealand. He's recently bought a 1938 Austin Big 7 and a 1964 MG Magnet to keep his A50 company. Should I start a YouTube channel to show the resurrection of these two and where should I start? Yes, definitely. Um, I mean, he's got a very interesting job. He works with restoring British cars as his job. So oh, wow. he knows his way around yeah. them very well. And uh, yeah, just start, grab your mobile phone and... Um, make videos with your mobile phone it's how this channel began it's amazing what you can do with these mobile phones i've moved on a bit just because you try and improve <laughs> all the time yeah you, you can't see i've actually got the microphone attached to a bottle of nick wax uh, waterproofing stuff which reminds me i need to do ellie's hood again and the lighting is provided by car jack yeah yeah we've got a trolley jack here <laughs> with a light so uh, that's how professional i have become after all these years but it's amazing, it's amazing what you can do with a mobile phone. Uh, I think Steph iDriver Classic has only recently made the move to a proper camera. Uh, she was doing all her filming and editing, all the voiceover stuff, on her mobile phone. It's terrifying how competent these things are. So um, yeah, just start filming, just start talking. Uh, it's nice if you can show work being done, that's what people are really interested in. Um, but you soon learn that you know you get tripods in the way, lighting, not as easy as you think, but even just talking through what you've done, what you plan to do, um, that sort of stuff, just walk around stuff even, uh, especially on old cars like that. I mean, the Austin Big 7s are seriously rare cars, and the Magnet was the sportiest of the Farinas, uh, twin carburetor engines, and uh, yeah, they had particularly nice tail fins, as I recall, on those. So yeah, start your channel, and uh, let me know when you have, and I will definitely have a look. But that brings us to the end at last. So that has been quite a selection of questions. Uh, remember they're asked by people who are YouTube channel members or um, patrons via Patreon. All the links are in the description below if you wish to support the channel that way. Uh, yeah, we need to go home and start packing stuff um, for the store. So thank you very much for your support and attention. And uh, we look forward to seeing you thank in a you future much, video. Guys. Bye. Farewell.